Welcome to the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions, now in its 22nd season. Our panel features a longtime Penn State media and Nitwits tag team, Neil Rudell of the Altoona Mirror, and Mark Brennan of Lions 247 with Fight on State. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ Sports Director Peter Terpstra, and each week we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by... Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Caldwell Banker Town & Country Real Estate, Blair County's home-a-day realtor. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By Encompass Health, a higher level of care. Encompass Healthcare, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Salani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. By Allegheny Street Cigar, Allegheny Street Cigar, Blair County's only cigar lounge. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Freedom RV, get ready to tailgate this Penn State football season with Freedom RV Rentals. By Jethro's, serving ribs, steaks, Italian specialties, and the famous Prospector salad since 1983. Takeouts, delivery, and catering. By Lucky's Beer Distributor. Let Lucky's Beer get you ready for PSU game day. By Remax Results Realty Group. Committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry. The answer is always Dorman's. Bullington Trailways, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from a variety of locations in State College and hotels in the Altoona area. Geo's Barbecue, award-winning hickory smoked ribs, chicken, and much more by Star Beverage. No matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Lions 247 with Fight on State your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Welcome to Nittany Nation Overtime. Hey, hi, hello. This is Nittany Nation Overtime, and we're the three nitwits today. Of course, we got Neil, we got Mark, and we got myself, and we're going to talk about Penn State football on a variety of different things. This is kind of our season in review show. Uh, Penn State, first up, got a win in the Cotton Bowl over Memphis, 53-39. Uh, uh, a lot of scoring in that game. I think we'll kind of just start there and see where it takes us. Uh, but it's nice to end the season on a win. You get 11 wins. Uh, and I, I think that, uh, I mean, you, you don't want to end the season any other way. And we'll get to all the playoff stuff. But what did you think of the, uh, the Cotton Bowl victory? Well, hey, the, they answered the bottom line. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought in the second quarter, Penn State wasn't uh, got off to a slow start. Second year in a row in a bowl game, uh, slow start. But uh, regrouped, and I thought we're, we're on the verge of kind of naming their score midway through the second period, uh, second quarter. And then... Um, Memphis showed a ton of character. They really did. Uh, had some real talent at the skill positions, and and then Penn State forced Penn State to regroup again, uh, and they did. Uh, so I think that Penn State got some things out of it, uh, both ways, uh, things that they can work on, and also things to feel good about. Yeah, going into this game, everybody was wondering, is Penn State really going to show up after being paired with a non-Power 5 uh, conference, not getting the Rose Bowl bid? And I think the thing that stuck out to me is that Penn State played like it wanted to be there. Did not play a perfect game by any means, but there were plenty of opportunities in this one, especially early, that they could have just mailed it in. And if you look around you know, the bowl kind of landscape, you've seen instances where teams have done that. Penn State did not do that. And we talked about it going into the bowl. It seemed like there was a different vibe this year that most of the people who were going to make decisions had made them. Uh, they wanted to be there, and that's the way it played out. Also, Neil, to, to piggyback on what you said, Given everything that Memphis went through with coaching changes and, and, and you name it, and how overmatched their defense was, what a, what a nice effort from that team. So wasn't a, a, an especially well-played game all around, but entertaining. And in terms of bowl games I've covered, I had a lot of fun covering that specific game. A couple things stuck out to me. 
Uh, one, it seemed like the crowd was pro Memphis crowd. Uh, it, it, was. Was. it was drivable yeah. distance um, for for Memphis fans, and I mean it's a longer trip uh, for Penn State fans. So uh, I mean, you know, it was a bit hostile at times, and there was a lot of energy behind Memphis's play. And that quarterback for Memphis really made some nice throws, man. Great mustache too. Just got to throw that in there. Brady White. <laughs> Shout out to Brady White. Yeah, uh, and you know what? When you're a Memphis uh, and you're in, you get an opportunity against a, a blue blood type program. That's what you sort of hope for. That you have a good showing. You're not embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they did that. And you know, no question. You know, uh, their receivers were very talented. Ran hard. Uh, clearly, they they couldn't stop Penn State's run. Yeah. Uh, Penn State ran for I think 439. Uh, and yet, a lot of the people felt like they could have run for 600. That why they pass it all. <coughs> but um, well, think if Will, if Will Levis had played that whole game. That's not a knock on Clifford, man. but they probably could have run for 800. Yards. I actually thought they'd stick him in there when Memphis was really hanging on in the fourth quarter, and it was obvious Penn State was trying to run. I was surprised he didn't get a snap or two. Yeah, one thing I'd like to say about the Penn State defense, you know, Peter, you talked about how well Memphis's offense played, and that was mm -hmm. expected. They played well all year. The Penn State defense, I know a lot of fans were frustrated by how many yards they were the, that Memphis offense was able to build up. But don't forget, they forced six field goals. Now, that kid stepped up and made six field goals. Yeah. There's something yep. to be said for that. But when your defense forces six field goals against a quarterback and skilled players that talented, you know, end of the day, that's a, that's a, a, a pretty good situation. You'd prefer to give up fewer yards, but I think the defense represented when it needed to. Well, and especially we really saw the dawning of uh, a superstar linebacker in Parsons. We saw it mm -hmm. uh, developing through the year and even last year when he led the team in tackles without, uh, I think he made one start in the bowl game last year. I mean, he forces uh, two fumbles, he breaks up passes, uh, he led the team in tackles. The two plays, you know, inside the red zone area there, if Hanser doesn't go for the scoop and score, that's a <laughs> touchdown. And, uh, and they're there, or they recover, and then he gets the play for Garrett Taylor. Well, then, and then he, then he drops what would have been a pick six, which was hilarious because then <laughs> after the game, and you were there, yeah. Journey Brown was ripping him for not catching Everyone it. Everyone so was you're, ripping you're him. You're looking at a big game that could have been, like, elevated that much more. And I think, you know, we could talk about this later in the show. But moving forward, you know, Franklin talked this year, James Franklin talked this year about how the sky is the limit for this kid. You are seeing it. I mean, and he said afterward, Peter, I think you were there. Yeah that he is not where he needs to be. There are still a lot of areas, which is kind of a scary proposition for the rest of the football world. And yet he played so well. He you really, really did. couldn't criticize him for dropping the interception. But his That's teammates well did, he was, well, and it was hilarious. Yeah, All right, yeah. let's quickly talk about Penn State's quarterback play. What did you guys see out of Clifford? Um, and are there any question marks going forward with what to expect from him? I thought it was very difficult to judge, and Sean addressed this after the game, that that Memphis clearly went out of its way to stop the Penn State passing game to the extent that it was basically allowing Penn State to run the ball. So I think it's very difficult to gauge a whole lot out of that. What I will say is he did not look as sharp as we've seen him this year. I still think there was some rust there, and I'm anxious to see – how if he really needs to get back to where his legs can be a weapon because yeah. we've seen that when when they are when his legs are a weapon he's that much better of a quarterback but I think obviously going into spring practice to me he's the clear-cut number one uh, so yeah. long provided that he's healthy you know Levis showed some good things when he's in there but I still don't think he's the kind of passing threat that that uh, that uh, Clifford is at this point yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, obviously he's your number one quarterback, but I don't think, and maybe some of it is some injury things, he wasn't completely healthy the last month of the mm -hmm. season, but he also didn't play uh, nearly as well at the end of the year that he played in the first half of the year, and I think that's something that he's going to have to uh, get off to better starts and uh, whatnot. I agree with you about his legs. He, he made some plays the other day just consistently. I, I just don't think he was as good as now. They were playing tougher competition at the end of the yep. year, too. But I think he's a lot like McSorley, and when, we, we, when Trace McSorley was banged up and not able to, to beat people with his legs, he was not nearly as effective. So I think there's kind of a connecting factor there. But, you know, the key thing that you have to ask with quarterbacks in this offense is, 
listen, they are going to take hits. You have to, there has to be, I think, a middle ground here where even if your quarterback is a little bit banged up, that he can still be effective, and maybe we'll see that with the new OC. All right, coming up next on Nittany Nation Overtime, some players have made their big decisions. We'll hit on that and some of our, how this could affect the team going forward next. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Caldwell Banker Town & Country Real Estate, Blair County's home-a-day realtor. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By Encompass Health, a higher level of care. Encompass Healthcare, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Salani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back to the show. We're going to bring you some news and notes and some important things going into next year and obviously that we're kind of surrounding the bowl game. We're going to start with uh, Penn State wide receiver KJ Hamler has announced that he's leaving for the NFL draft. Uh, the longer it kind of got drawn out, the more he had the feeling that he was going to leave. Uh, what do you think about uh, his decision? I, I'm not surprised. I mean, I think you're looking at a player who was a, a top high school receiver and had to miss his entire senior season uh, due to a serious knee injury. Uh, it took him more than a year to recover. He wasn't really able to play at Penn State until his redshirt freshman year. Do I think he's ready for the NFL? I, you know, I really don't. Uh, but I can't begrudge him for making this decision yeah. given some of the injury issues. I think if you look at K.J. Hamler the last couple of years, and the last five or six games of the last two seasons, his production scoring-wise has really dropped off. I think he only has had one or two touchdowns. That touchdown obviously was taken off the yep. board. Uh, so I think he's got a lot of, uh, uh, he's got, he has to become more consistent. The athletic ability is there. He's going to blow people away by running an amazing 40 and doing great shuttle work at the combine. But I just don't think he was consi as consistent as a receiver as maybe he needs to be. Yeah, um, you know, some drops, but the durability factor is going to be, yeah, he can take the top off uh, of a defense, uh, you know, and get deep. Uh, but, uh, and when he's in the open field, he's really uh, a beauty to watch. But as far as going over the middle for tough catches consistently at the next level, um, that's going to be a real challenge. But hey, Probably the fact that he's been injured the last three yeah. plus years makes it understandable. Might as well get on with it because if yeah. he gets hurt again next year, uh, he still hasn't been paid. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You can't begrudge it whatsoever yeah, right given here. that. And listen, we don't know what his family situation sure. is. So you, we could never say that a guy shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that in terms of being able to go in and make an immediate impact, I think he's more of an immediate impact guy as a return man at the next level than necessarily as a receiver. I think he's going to have to work his way into that role. All right, so we have some staff changes for Penn State as well. Uh, obviously, they uh, announced the new offensive coordinator before the bowl game. Tyler Bowen called the plays in the bowl game. Uh, Kirk Sharaka from Minnesota is going to take over uh, as the new offensive coordinator. Uh, and then uh, Coach Limegrover, the offensive line coach, is let go. What do you make about, of all this? Well, I think the, this is the age we're in. Uh, you're not going to uh, assemble a staff in a given year and stick with that staff for 40 years. Um, for better or for or worse. Four years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so when, when, there's a, when there's an area that there's concern about or that um, it may be a feeling that you just want to make a change to possibly keep uh, a Tyler Bowen, if that ends up being uh, what the trade-off is and another person come in and replacing him. And I'm just kind of guessing yeah. that I think they really want to keep uh, – you know, when you make decisions on an offensive coordinator and there's, there's some inevitable movement. Well, Tyler Bowen's only 30 years old, so I think I don't think he was really going to be the guy who was going to be the offensive coordinator. No, but do you think he may be the line coach? Well, that's exactly. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if that happens. As we tape this, no no uh, announcement has yep. been made. I like the fact that they were able to get Shiraka in there for the bowl game, not to necessarily coach, but to observe and see what was going on. I think that's a great way to kind of transition into the position. You feel a little bit bad for Minnesota. I'm glad they played well in their bowl game and were able to win it without him. Right. Mm -hmm. But you, you look at what Minnesota was able to do offensively the last couple of years and this was an impressive hire with respect to, to Lime Grover 
great guy, great family guy. But now we're getting to the point where for years we made the excuse that the offensive line was the area hit hardest by the sanctions. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it takes years and years to develop individual talent and depth. We're at the point now where they, that should no longer be the issue that it was. And the offensive line didn't play nearly as well this year as I think a lot of people were hoping it would play. And uh, James Franklin clearly saw that it was time to kind of move in the yeah, different direction. Yeah, it should be counted on as a team strength next year. Yep, yep. All right, coming up next on Indy Nation Overtime, we're going to hand out some end of the year awards, uh, kind of take a hard look into 2020 next. The Nitwits are being brought to you by, by Allegheny Street Cigar. Allegheny Street Cigar, Blair County's only cigar lounge. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Freedom RV, get ready to tailgate this Penn State football season with Freedom RV Rentals. By Jethro's, serving ribs, steaks, Italian specialties, and the famous Prospector Salad since 1983. Takeouts, delivery, and catering. By Lucky's Beer Distributor. Let Lucky's Beer get you ready for PSU game day. By Remax Results Realty Group. Committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back. This is Nittany Nation Overtime. We are the three nitwits here today. Uh, before we get to nitwit of the year, let's take a hard look into 2020. Mm. Uh, biggest <laughs> holes to fill. Right? I had to tease a little let's bit. Not even get to nitwit of the yeah, year. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> biggest holes to fill going into next year. I think I've <clears throat> see, I've seen a, a consistent like inconsistency at a big outside receiver. Yeah. And I, I think I think that's got to be a point of emphasis. Yeah. And regardless of Hamler's pro potential where you yeah. think he may be drafted Absolutely. he's leaving a big void he was the guy that you were counting on uh, maybe it'll be jo uh, Jahan Dodson but the whole the the whole core needs bolstered yeah I think head. you know you're and you, I listen I go back to Justin Shorter too a guy who I was very high on and I thought this would be the point where he would be ready to step up and obviously he stepped out he instead. Is. Yeah, he's ste <laughs> he stepped out I don't know if he'll be stepping up yeah. but listen they have even with those two guys gone they're gonna have 10 or 11 scholarship receivers somebody is bound to step up you know maybe can Cam Sullivan Brown bounce back after at a year where he missed most of the time with injury uh, Daniel Do George John Dunmore TJ Jones I mean there are a lot of players there it, I just don't think there's one specific person, maybe as a group, they can get done. Punter's well, another place. I mean, yeah, a big void with Gilligan. Uh, and I Gilligan. think I, uh, Gilli <laughs> the Gilligan. Skipper, the skipper, too. <laughs> How about Ginger? <laughs> uh, the secondary also. I know you have a lot of young players there, but um, I think it just needs a little more retool, better communication. Well, Too many open opponents. Castro Fields is coming back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so they're going to be really good, I think, at corner, even with losing John Reed. They, got, they were able to get some young players, Keaton Ellis, uh, Marquise Wilson, yeah. a lot of playing time. And so I think the secondary is going to be fine. Uh, but I think I go back to receiver, and they need some of the young defensive ends to step up now with Etor moving on. There is a lot of talent, a ton of talent. They need some of these really young guys to step up. All right, end of the year awards. Uh, I'm just going to spew out mine, and then I'll let you guys spew. just kind of talk, talk about whatever. I think Journey Brown had a heck of a year on the yeah. offense mm -hmm. in an extremely crowded running back room. Uh, he emerged and had a great bowl game. Super happy for him on defense. I don't think you can pick anybody besides Michael yeah, Parsons. Yeah, well, Mark Parsons you know? would really be yeah. the whole team MVP. Right, absolutely. And, uh, and then special teams, Blake Gillikin. Uh, was excellent. And Jordan Stout, I mean, you, got, you, got to, you can't not mention him. He did. He had such a big impact. He can yeah, he's an unsung hero. Yeah, yeah, I'll be a little bit different. I will go with offense, Pat Fryermuth. I thought he was consistent. He made so many huge third down catches. Uh, and I think the attention paid to him opened things up for other players. And on special teams, I'm going to go with Dan Chisena. I, nice. I thought their coverage was their coverage units were outstanding. We mm -hmm. saw it in the bowl. Not necessarily, he, he's kind of representative of that whole kind of aspect of special teams. It paid off in the bowl, but I think Dan Chisena, a guy who kind of paid his dues, got a scholarship late. To me, he's kind of an unsung hero in my special teams MVP. Yeah, I, I agree on Fryermuth. He was the guy that I had. I, I think Mennett deserves sort of a shout out. Also, yeah. he's really developing. Blue guy. Coming back uh, as well. And Jonathan Sunderland, uh, Sutherland, 
I think really was uh, typified also their their coverage yeah. uh, in, in addition to, uh, to Senna. And I think other guys, I mean, I think I, I was always big on Sean Clifford this entire season. Yeah, he got banged up at the end of the season. But I think I think he did some really good things. We talk about how he looks to be, you know, the clear number one going into next year. Um, and we'll see how he can build on this year. That's going to be the biggest thing is, is how he can, you know, keep getting better because he's not going to have – he's been throwing it to Hamler and Fryermuth quite a bit, right? So kind of all the pieces got to fit together. You got to be able to make some completions to some, some other people going ahead. Well, and speaking of that, you know, going back to what Neil said, meant it. You know, from everything we heard, he really stepped up as a leader in that offensive line room. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be especially important now. You're bringing in a new O-line coach, even if it's somebody from in-house. To have that stabilizing factor in the middle of the line, I think, is big. All right. We got some fun coming up next. We're going to crown our nitwit of the year coming up <laughs> was next. It? Crown. Yep. It's we're, a pretty we're, big we're crown. Not a crown. <laughs> uh, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about some overarching stuff. The Nitwits are being brought to you by, by Dorman's Jewelry. The answer is always Dorman's. Fullington Trailways, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from a variety of locations in State College and hotels in the Altoona area. Geo's Barbecue, award-winning hickory smoked ribs, chicken, and much more by Star Beverage. No matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Lions 247 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. This is our last nitwits of the season. Uh, and one of the things we kind of get a chance to do when it comes to the bowl game, we get to hear from athletic director Sandy Barber on a variety of different things. Um, when we're in kind of a conference room and, uh, you know, she's naming off, uh, you know, big picture stuff around the football program, what stuck out to you, Mark? I think the fact that uh, they're in the middle of this process of getting the design phase approved for the next uh, improvements of, of Lash Building, it's ultimately going to be $70 million worth of improvements. People may say, boy, that seems ridiculous, but I'm telling you folks, for Penn State to compete at the level it wants to compete, when you look at the Clemsons, the LSUs, the teams that are, the Ohio States that are fighting for national championships, they have to do those imp imp uh, improvements for Lash Building, the practice facilities, and all those things. I think that's important. Uh, the, it's, that we're in the middle of going through that process. The sooner they can get it done, the better. And all this stuff takes time. Too. Yeah. yeah, good window with Sandy though. Uh, each year at the bowl game, mm -hmm. uh, just some quick hitting type of things, whether it's facilities or scheduling or other sports. Um, you know, I think it's a, a, an informational window for the fans, and it's a good interaction with the media. Basketball talk. It's yes, it's and the basketball team uh, having a, a great season so far. All right, let's. It's time to do it. Let's bring in our, our nitwit of the year standings. Yeah. The final deal. Whoa! I didn't realize. Oh yeah, Mark. Congratulations, man. Uh, you know what? Every every once in a while you get lucky. Maybe you get lucky two years in a row. So we'll yeah. see if Neil can catch up. And or it's, you it's yeah. worth noting that Joe Nastassi, he, he picked the point spread, right? Uh, yeah. The, uh, the Good job, Joe. We took that away from him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from Joey. No, good race this year. Congratulations. Always yeah, have fun. Thank you very much. Credit do yep. it all. The story within the story in the fourth quarter of every game. That we're looking at each other laughing. Yeah. <laughs> all so, right. Uh, Let's go ahead and uh, yeah, move on to our some thank quick yous. thank yous, though. Another great uh, 20, 22 years, uh, of about 10 here. Peter, thank you for yeah. uh, for hosting this year. You brought a, a new element. Hey, hi, hello. Hey, hi, Everybody hello. Remember that. And it's the second year. Second yeah. year. Yeah. Just want to we'll keep it going. Alert you. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you know, Joe Nastassi, Mike Irwin, uh, a lot of our standbys: Keith Conlon, Justin Kerpakis, Massimo, Wally, Bill Conce, Lou Prado. Three new nitwits this year, and the, all of them uh, really distinguished them. Steve Smear was tremendous. Uh, Trey Bauer, yeah, uh, Trey keeping it good. real <laughs> for sure, and a rising star with uh, Chima Coley. Excellent. And all these guys we hope to have back. And of course, having Sandy as our honorary guest nitwit uh, was nice. I want to thank uh, Brandon Telerik for all he's done here with. A little help. Even though he's an Ohio State fan, Brendan, yeah, we love you. That's, he's the guy hitting the buttons in the booth. Uh, shout out to everybody who's kind of helped keep this show going. I'm just doing what I can, small part. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming in here, too. It's been hey, fun. We, it's it's uh, great. 
that's our show, guys. We will catch you next season. See ya. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Caldwell Banker Town & Country Real Estate, Blair County's home-a-day realtor. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By Encompass Health, a higher level of care. Encompass Healthcare, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning by Reed and Salani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. By Allegheny Street Cigar, Allegheny Street Cigar, Blair County's only cigar lounge. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Freedom RV, get ready to tailgate this Penn State football season with Freedom RV Rentals. By Jethro's, serving ribs, steaks, Italian specialties, and the famous Prospector Salad since 1983. Takeouts, delivery, and catering. By Lucky's Beer Distributor. Let Lucky's Beer get you ready for PSU game day. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. Fullington Trailways, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from a variety of locations in State College and hotels in the Altoona area. Geo's Barbecue, award-winning hickory smoked ribs, chicken, and much more by Star Beverage. No matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Lions 247 with Fight on State your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.